Welcome everyone to another episode of Let's Make a Game. In between the last and this episode, I changed a whole lot of things in order to optimize our future progress. Usually I wanted to make this every fifth episode, but there has been so many optimizations that I decided to do it right now in the ninth episode. This also means today's scripts are going to be available in the description. Nevertheless, what we are going to do today is optimize our GUI in terms that we can actually create neutral categories. What I mean by that is that we have not decided yet what's going to be in category 1, 2 and 3. They all have neutral names and therefore we will be able to switch around anything that we put in here. We can decide where all the different icons will go in the end without having to change too many names around. Further to demonstrate these optimizations, we are going to create the fifth category so you actually know what steps have to be taken in order to add the fifth category, which at the moment doesn't work. I have made it all up to category four. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the optimizations that have been taken place. Now, since we're slowly but surely accumulating tons of objects and scripts, I try to kind of sort out the stuff. What I have done is created a bunch of groups, such as for the tile sets, for GUI elements, for world objects, building objects, and the survivor category. This way we will have a much better overview of uh, what's happening and what is actually there. There will be hundreds of objects and groups are just going to be a necessity. Also for the scripts I have a little bit of a different system. What I have done is categorized all of the scripts which go on different objects. So everything that is on the object heart is actually in here. Everything that is on the menus is in here and so on and so forth. The same thing as with the sprites happened with the objects right here. I made basically the same categories and put the objects corresponding to the sprites in there. As for the rooms, we have no changes since we only have one room so far. Another very important change that I have made is I have renamed basically all of my scripts. Now this might be confusing a little bit for you, but what I have done is changed it into a more logical name and also I added a underscore and the event the script is on at the end. So I know the world generation script is on the step event of the object heart. Or I also know that the script spawn menu category all is on the left released event of an object menu. Now in this case the object menu would be this one right here because this one can spawn all of these categories. So these are two very important changes that I have made in terms of optimization apart from making all the categories neutral so this object menu category is no more the storage room. It could be but we can also exchange it with anything else we desire. That's basically the aim we're going for. Yet another thing I optimized is on the script survivor movement, which is on the alarm zero event, if you remember. What I did here is decrease the chance by increasing this number, so they will more often stand still, but I also added cases 5 to 8, which deal with diagonal directions. So now the villagers will not only move into 4 directions randomly, but into 8 different directions, just making it more realistic, therefore a, you know, small optimization. Okay guys, to clear things a little bit up, we just have a brief look at what is actually happening and which script is called when exactly. So right now what we can see is the object menu main, which is being created with the spawn menu main on the object hard create event. If we click right here, then another script is being called, namely the spawn menu category all. And this will decide depending on which image index is being displayed, which menu it should spawn. So here it is spawning category 1, if I click this one it's spawning category 2 and so on and so forth. Then when we click right here on the category 1 we will spawn a ghost image and at the same time disable this view again. Right here we have the ghost image of 
this object. This happens of course on the object menu category one, which is calling the script spawn category ghost image. So here we are spawning all the ghost images depending on which menu is being displayed and additionally which image index it has. So I can also go to category one and object two and you can see the number two right here is being displayed and I can also place this object down and we can see category one object two we have one instance of that. So I think this should clear up a few confusions that might have been caused due to me renaming all the scripts, but such things will happen all the time. We will have to do a lot of optimization so that we don't lose focus and overview. Another thing that I programmed in is that if we have a building object still on stage one, therefore nothing has been built yet, we can sell it again by right-clicking it. One thing we have to take into consideration is that once we have an object placed and we want to get rid of this ghost category, when we right-click on the stage one, we don't want the stage one to be disappearing. So we have to take into consideration that whenever we have a ghost image at the same spot, we don't want the selling to be actually happening. Let's have a look at this script briefly and then we're gonna continue by adding the fifth category so this button here will also work. Now this is really not much of a brainer. Whenever we have placed down an object and we want to delete it, it should be on stage one. So if the villagers haven't built anything yet, we can remove it again. If they have built something, so it is on stage two, we shouldn't be able to remove it. So right here we're making sure that none of our ghost categories actually exist in the same place when we right release click. And of course the script is on every right released event of each object. So every object that I can place down using the interface has this script on it. So whenever we don't have a ghost image at the same spot and whenever it is image index zero, therefore stage one or not built, then we want the instance to be destroyed easy as that. Okay, right, what we're gonna do right now is go through the whole process of creating the fifth category so you know exactly which scripts and objects are involved in the process. We're first gonna open up our sprites and we're gonna go to the GUI objects. What I'm gonna do right here is copy menu category 4 and the menu category 4 ghost and I will rename them. So let's duplicate that and call this sprite menu category five. And we're also gonna edit this sprite, you know, just very briefly. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, it is just a placeholder. And at some point we're actually also gonna create some graphics, I believe. Maybe gonna make some graphics episodes. But right here, we only want to add the fifth category here as well and right here so that we can clearly see this is category five object three that will be placed in here. Okay, close that off, save it, and I'm gonna drag it down at the bottom of the list. We're also gonna duplicate the ghost object and call this sprite menu cat five ghost. We're also gonna edit that so that it will actually state the correct number. Oh, I'm actually stupid. I could just have removed this one here. <laughs> that was not very practical, but nevertheless, we can still do it. Okay, so we changed both of our sprites so that they can represent category 5 and we can have different placeable objects or spells or whatever the heck we are gonna come up with. Next up, what we of course want to do is also go into the building objects and right here you can see all of the different buttons we have so far. At the moment, of course, I only have three buttons for each category, but we can have as many as we want as the script is expandable. We just have to go into the global variables and define how many buttons we have. So what we're gonna do is copy category 401, 402 and 403 and we're gonna rename them to category 501, 502, and 503 accordingly. So let's duplicate this sprite category 501. We can save this and I'm not gonna change anything because the dev GUI will tell us whether or not it is the correct object. So we're not gonna rely on the graphics there. We just want to see the number. Let's duplicate 402 and call it sprite cat 502. Gonna drag this down here. And last but not least, duplicate this sprite category 503. 
now we have a nice list of sprites. We are done with the sprites. We can move on to the categories and in the GUI folder we're gonna copy or duplicate this one right here. We're gonna call it object menu category 5. There you go. We're gonna save that. We're gonna drag it down and we're also gonna duplicate this one here which is going to be object menu category 5 ghost. We will have to make sure that we are actually also using the correct sprites. So right here we would have to change to the sprite menu category 5 and right here we want to change this to sprite menu category 5 ghost. Naturally we also want to go into the building objects and we want to add the 501, 502 and 503 categories. For this we can just duplicate anything object category 501 and we of course have to make sure that we change it building objects 501 but you get the basic gist so let me just finish copy these two over and then we're gonna start with the scripts all right let's continue with the scripting part or at least having a look into the scripts and copy the necessary stuff over what we first have to do is check the object menu hard our global variables in here at the bottom we want to add how many buttons we have in the category 5 which at the moment is the same as for everything else but we will be able to expand or lower this number as we want. Next up we want to make sure that once we actually click on the object menu main that this is being registered right here in the spawn menu category all left released because that's what's happening and you can already see that we only have to add stuff for instance right here we have to add that or if an instance exists object menu category 5 then we want to to destroy everything. This script we have I think built in the previous episode and right now I just expanded it to contain neutral names and an easily expandable menu. Don't worry everything will be in the description today so you will have access to all of the scripts. So else if that is actually not true we want the menu to spawn and this is also the code we have been making in the previous episode and all we have to do is copy this category 4 over we're gonna place it down below, rename it to category 5 and we have to make sure if the image index is 4, therefore it is category 5, we want to create this menu with this length, the category 5 menu buttons and of course we want to spawn object menu category 5. And this is all we are doing basically. We're checking for the image index our menus have and then we decide which menu has to be spawned. And down below we still have to enable the view just like we did in the previous episode. Okay, that's all we had to do in order to be able to spawn the according menu, which is of course object menu category 5. Now we have to make sure that once we click on the object menu category 5 on any of the three possibilities, we actually register that in the next script, which is to spawn the category ghost image. So let's open it up. And right here you can see this is one of the scripts I called something like room assignment in the previous episode. But spawn category ghost image is a much more accurate name in my opinion. Anyways, here we check if the object index is object menu category 1. So if the menu that I'm clicking on is the object menu category 1, then this will happen. Namely, if it is on the image index 0, then we want the menu category 1 ghost to appear. If it is on image index 1, we also want the menu category 1 one goes to appear but with the image index of one and so on and so forth. And right here we only have to add all of the categories in the same exact manner. We have category 3 and we have category 4 right there. So what I can do is just grab all of this, copy it down, name it category 5. We have to make sure that it checks for the object index category 5. We're also going to rename all of the titles here. Instance create category 5 ghost. We can leave everything else. We just have to replace all of the fours. And also right here category 5 ghost. Great. Last but not least we have to make sure that once we want to disable the view that our menu category 5 is included as well. So I'm just going to copy copy this with statement as well and rename this category 5 so the view visible to will be false and also 
all of the categories will be constantly destroyed. No matter which category we actually want to disable, all of them will be disabled. Yeah, that's all we had to do for this script. So instead of taking all of these scripts into individual scripts, I just combined them by checking for the object index. So now depending on which object the script is actually on, it will behave differently. Okay, so the next script we want to change is the one that executes when we right click on the category ghost and therefore spawn the object itself in the world. This all happens on the script create category objects left released. So let's open that up and right here we can see that first of all we have a bunch of conditions such as do not play stuff if there is already an object there. So we cannot place two objects on the same spot. All we have to do is copy the condition over for the category 5 so we're going to add all the category 5 objects to this condition. And if that is actually true, we will be able to place objects. And right here we check again which ghost object we have actually enabled. If we have the category 1, then either of those objects will be spawned, depending on which image index we currently have. Same thing for category 2, 3 and 4. Therefore we only have to copy this in order to create category 5. So let's check if it is category 5 ghost and if that is the case and also the image index is 0 we want to create category 501 and so on and so forth. That's all we had to do for this script and now we will actually also be spawning the correct category. Next up we also want to change something in the script assign menu sprites. This script is of course responsible to assign all of the different textures to the menu and we have to make sure that we add all of the different categories. So right here we also want to be able to spawn the menu category 5 which would be object index category 5 with the length of category 5 menu buttons and also... No, that's actually all we had to change. Perfect. Okay, there are just a few more things to adjust. First of all, I want to make sure that we add the category 5 to the disable stuff. This has been known as the previous global right click. Right here I want to make sure that we are also destroying category 5 once we do globally right click. And we want to make sure that we are also destroying category 5 ghost. There we go, that should be good. Another thing we must not forget is to go and check the world objects. Right here I have the script that when we right click on a not finished tile that we can actually sell it. This is right here. We, we've had a look at that before and right here of course we are also going to add the category 5. So there's quite a few scripts we have to be aware that we have to change stuff once we add more categories, more buttons and so on and so forth. But for the most part it is a pretty solid framework to save us a lot of time. Anyways, I believe the last thing we need to do is go into the draw debug GUI and right here at the bottom I already added all of the categories just so that we can see whether or not we're spawning the correct object. So I'm just gonna copy this over, I'm gonna call this category 5 for all of them, 555. Five, five. I also have to make sure that this is 5. And last but not least we have to make sure it is on the correct spot. So this would be 400 and 420. Okay, that should be good. We have adjusted everything and now we are ready to test the game. Okay, so in order to actually implement this category we went through quite a process but this process is not as nearly as intensive as if we would have to change and switch around names all the time. So naming all of these neutrally and just assigning them names using the textures is a much more reliable solution. Okay, so now we should be able to spawn the menu category 5 and depending on which image index we are clicking on, we can spawn set category. And you can already see that we have indeed spawned category 5 object 2. We have three of those guys. If I right click, we will also get rid of the ghost image and we should be able to sell stuff. So everything seems to be correcto mundo. So I think what we're going to do in the next episode is finish the code that I have started already in order to adjust the edges so that they don't appear as squarish anymore. 
That could be the next World Generation episode actually. Right now I'm trying to figure out a more or less slick code in order to actually achieve that and it is much harder than you would actually think. There's a lot of problems that can occur. But other than that I think we have had a good optimization episode. Don't forget to check the description if you are interested in all of the scripts. Other than that have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you the next time. Bye bye.